One time, my nursing director told me a quote after I was bullied by one of the nurses on the floor after a long, strenuous 13-hour shift. She told me this quote by Maya Angelou, and to this very day, I still feel how powerful this quote was. Maya Angelou once said, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel and that is going to be the basis of today's video essay Today we're going to be talking about the mean girl to nurse pipeline Sexism, racism, classism and how the current state of the US medical system is literally on fire So if you're interested in this topic keep on watching Hi guys, welcome and welcome back to Ella Pastoral. If this is your first time ever coming upon this channel right here, typically I make video essays relating to all of my favorite pieces of media and sometimes I talk about social issues, but today after months of working on this script, I'm finally ready to talk about the mean girl to nurse pipeline. So a quick disclaimer before we get into the meat of this conversation, I am begging y'all please watch this video in its entirety before y'all comment because i've noticed a huge influx of people watching like the first two seconds of my video making a long unnecessary comment based off a point i already addressed in the video and if you guys haven't watched the full video and i peep that you will be having your comments deleting because come on y'all but let's hop into the actual video According to Megan Brennan, nurses continue to garner the highest ethic ratings from Americans. The 79% of U.S. adults who now say nurses have very high or high honesty and ethical standards is far more than any of the 17 professions rated. Still, the current rating is 10% points lower than the highest rating for nurses recorded in 2020. And honestly, I think I know why. As I have just been on social media, media a lot since the pandemic happened and is still happening i've noticed a sick trend being discussed and the trend that i'm specifically referencing here is the mean girl to nurse pipeline the term mean girls is associated with high school bullying and high school cliques when we think of the word mean girls we think about people who bully you for your perceived flaws i mean that is literally what the movie mean girls is based upon but when we take a term that is so negative such as being called a mean girl Girl and be associated with a profession that according to Gallup is supposed to be one of the most trusted and well-respected profession you know something is going wrong the mean girl to nurse pipeline states that those who were so mean and so rude to you as a student in high school or middle school or even younger when it's time to choose a career choice they eventually choose nursing to be said career choice and this may be strange to y'all who've never actually met one of these mean girls turned nursing but if you know you know exactly what I'm talking about. And even though it might sound outlandish to believe that the mean girls who are literally such despicable people choose nursing, which is known to be a compassion and empathetic field, I feel like there is a plethora of reasons as to why some of these mean girls choose nursing as their career of choice. So from looking at y'all's tweets and TikToks and talking to people I know in real life, I have about three-ish reasons why I feel like mean girls become nurses. And I think it's the power dynamics, the competitive nature and overall the lack of emotional intelligence so for the whole power dynamics thing for all you non-americans out there or people who are not very well versed in the u.s healthcare system we have a very hierarchical system here in the united states where if i'm being so honest it goes physicians the managers of the floor nurses cnas and then literally everybody else everybody else being like the environmental services the people who take care of the trash and stuff the technicians it and personally this is how I see the hierarchy of the medical field due to how hierarchical our medical field is a lot of nurses get kind of bullied by the doctors and a lot of these people instead of like going to therapy and figuring out a healthy outlet to do with that type of bullying they decide to put their anger and frustrations onto people who they deem lower than them like the nurses being mean to their CNAs the nurses being mean to the environmental services people I've seen it for myself guys it's actually a mess and then that leads me to the second point that i mentioned earlier which is the extremely competitive nature 
of nursing. And I feel like this leads us into the next point I wanted to bring up, which most definitely has to be the lack of emotional intelligence. And I feel like that's what y'all be really seeing on your end. I'm just going to read the paragraph I wrote when I was scripting this video. And I said, mean girls often lack empathy and struggle to understand the emotions and needs of others. In nursing where compassion and empathy are key components of patient care, these individuals may struggle to connect with their patients on a deeper level. This disconnect can lead to subpar patient experiences and contribute to the negative reputation of nurses. And when I first got into nursing school, the first thing they made us go through in orientation was listening to a guest lecture about compassion and diversity and equity and i was just texting my friends like yo why are they trying to teach us about compassion and <laughs> especially as it relates to diversity but as i'm about to graduate may gang here i am i really get to see why that was the first thing they made us do because even though classes and lectures about empathy and sympathy and treating all of your patients the same has literally been in our curriculum every semester i look at some of my classmates and i'm like oh baby these classes are for me baby they're for you because i remember when we read the book the true life of henrietta Lacks, about how the hospital organization known as johns hopkins took the cells of the black woman known as henrietta Lacks, and then the medical industry proceeded to make billions off of those cells and refused to a call her by the right name and b give her family money as compensations for literally using their dead mom cells i was literally looking at some of these people in my class when we were reading this book and seeing the way they talked about her reacted to her i was like oh the classes that they were talking about how we lack empathy and sympathy and can see people as people these classes weren't for me because i already understand that as a black woman these classes are for y'all and i promise y'all i'll eventually get into the reason why i wanted to make this video but seeing that a lot of these nurses aren't empathetic is so so sad and this is coming from me who isn't even a patient if y'all have been on this channel for a while shout out to all the new people but y'all probably don't know but during my purple hair phase era i guess when i made that really popular the amanda the adventurer video that went like semi-viral i was being actively bullied by my nurse preceptor and i'm telling y'all it was so bad that i would spend my lunch breaks crying in the bathroom because of how awful this lady and her friends treated me especially since i was a student nurse so i was lesser than her and i was the only black person on the floor it's a mess and for me I have the ability to get up and walk away and I still felt miserable, let alone me actually being the patient on the bed unable to escape from that awful situation and I just feel like it's in the hospitals, it's in the clinics and it's especially awful in the schools. As a nursing student, I'm telling y'all now, y'all think the nurses are mean? The people who are teaching us are worse. Where do y'all think we get it from? I don't want to spill too much tea or whatever, but literally at my school, they're doing an investigation because a lot of the administration have been sending mean condescending emails to students, leaving a paper trail. So now they're all being investigated. And if these are the people who are in charge and are teaching us, how do you think that reflects on us, the students who are learning from them? It's a mess. But you guys don't have to take my word for it. You guys can literally hear it from, I guess, the horse's mouth itself. And that's how we're going to go into the next section, nurses versus the public. So if you guys aren't on TikTok or social media like I am, and specifically nurse talk, you probably haven't seen the whole drama that popped off like months ago in December that happened around nurses, nurses reputations, all of that. So I'm just now going to insert a couple of TikToks so we can all be on the same page of the drama that happened. And I'm telling you this right now, this situation gets so messy. People are losing their jobs, people are getting fired. It's, it's a mess. I'll come back when you guys have finished watching the TikToks. Okay, let me catch you guys up to speed about what's going on with Selena and Nurse Morgan on this here app, honey. Now, about 48 hours ago, Selena had posted this video, and I'm going to play you a snippet. But what it did was basically send the entire healthcare world on TikTok in a tizzy. The only reason it's a nurse shortage is because 
These girls are getting degrees for a bag. They have no empathy, no sympathy for nobody. Then their attitudes are stink as hell. And then they quit because nurse life is not what they thought. They thought nurse was going to be, oh, I'm going to walk around in cute little scrubs with Crocs one and get a $3,000 check. And then when they realized they actually got to help people. Now, after Selena had made that statement, Nurse Morgan had chimed in and she said this. No one tells people in male-dominated fields that they actually have to love what they do in order to do it well. Look at pilots, look at people in tech. Nobody on Beyonce, Giselle knows Carter's internet is going to make me feel bad about choosing a profession that I would get paid for well in this economy. Now, people were all agreeing with the statements coming from Nurse Morgan until this tiny snippet at the end of her video caught people's eye, or at least caught their ear. And I don't even feel like this is a fair assessment of anyone to make who does not work in healthcare. You work at Circle K. Now, it's the last statement that a lot of people on the internet had a little bit of trouble kind of digesting. Because once it was let known, even though Selena was very vocal about where she worked, but once it was let known that she had worked at Circle K, well, that's when the internet did their thing and not in the good way. And so the fact that so many black women band together to get me fired is, it's crazy, but I'm still gonna advocate for y'all because at the end of the day, I'm a black woman. Now, in just two short days from her posting that video, obviously wearing her Circle K shirt till now, she was actually fired from her job. And that is what's sending the internet in kind of this tailspin because people voicing their opinions on the internet, honest opinions, right? Should not warrant them losing their income, which is kind of crazy. Now, once the information was brought to light, Nurse Morgan had posted this video. So about an hour ago, I started getting comments saying that someone's video that I stitched yesterday or day before yesterday, was fired from their job, also making untrue claims that I called their job to get them fired. Between both of my platforms, I have over half a million followers. Half a million people have seen this video. There were a lot of people who were on both sides of the argument. Some people clearly were very, very upset. I'm going to be real clear. I've never, ever been the type of person that, number one, throws rocks and then hides my hand. And I'm still not that kind of person in this economy that would try to get anybody fired, regardless of how they treated me. If we disagree on the Internet, it's the Internet. I respectfully do not know who called your job, who called corporate, whatever claims you're making. But I am sorry that that happened to you because that's not fair and it's not right. So in the next coming days, we're going to see how all of this is going to end up playing out on both sides of the coin. But I want to hear from you guys. What do you think about this entire argument and debacle on the nursing shortage? Somebody voicing their opinions and literally getting fired for it. As well as those classist statements that people are alleging that Nurse Morgan made in regards to where Selena works and why her opinion isn't valid. Okay, so now that we have all caught up on the drama and we're all on the same page about the situation that happened, I want to get something off my chest. When Selena said what she said about the nurses, I'm telling you here right now, I felt extremely triggered by what she said. Like as a nursing student, I really feel like it's a public versus nurses type situation. And overall, nursing feels like such a mess right now. And it's so frustrating to see because this is the job field that I actively want to work in. Like we are underpaid. Nurses are burnt out, especially after the pandemic. We have terrible patient to nurse ratios. We're consistently accosted by the public. And we also have a bunch of stuff that's going on behind the scenes that the public doesn't know about. But I just keep seeing the public parade nurses all the time, even when we're not doing anything wrong. And it's so frustrating and it's so annoying. And like I said, I really feel like even though I understand where Selena is coming from, because I literally have worked with some of these evil, vile nurses. I saw that TikTok and because of the fact that Shadi did not know what she was talking about, I just scrolled and went on my day. But after I spent a while scrolling on my TikTok for you page, I saw stitch after stitch after stitch roasting this girl. Yo, I'm telling you, that comment she made caused the entirety of nurse talk to pounce on her. And due to people feeling so frustrated by her practically saying she hates nurses, they got her fired. Well, before they got her fired, Selena practically made an apology saying that, yeah, she didn't really know what she was talking about when she said that there was a shortage of nurses because she practically said the reason why there is a shortage of nurses is because people are doing it for an aesthetic. When the gag is, we don't A, have enough spots in these nursing schools. We don't have enough people in like educational spots to teach these new nurses. So obviously that is contributing to the limits of nursing school spots and literally the burnout and bull 
but we're gonna get into it but literally she said yeah i apologize for not knowing what's going on with the nursing shortage thing but i still agree that y'all be <laughs> and then that's when they got her fired i'm asking god to leave my tongue with this apology the only thing i'm apologizing for is saying that that's the sole purpose why there's a nurse shortage I, that's the only thing I'm apologizing for. I'm not apologizing because y'all claim y'all are underpaid. Y'all getting paid $33, $33 an hour in this economy. I'm not apologizing for that. The only reason y'all are mad about y'all paying now is because y'all cannot live lavish like how y'all were promised. Which leads back to my next point. Which leads to my original point. Y'all were doing it for the money. And again, y'all don't need to be... And this goes for anybody in the medical field. Doctors do because y'all wanted me to mention them so bad. This goes for anybody that has anybody livelihood in their hands you need to have compassion you need to love the job that you're doing period and then y'all sit up here talking about y'all don't know how we get treated by patients y'all don't know how i get treated by doctors but then y'all turn around and get on this app talk about well you work at circle k and you want my black ass to have compassion for you because doctors are treating y'all the same way that y'all treat people that y'all feel are beneath y'all please and then y'all in the comments talking about some Y'all only saying it's because more black women got degrees. Who the fuck mentioned black women? You don't know who I come in contact with daily. You don't know who I see on my For You page. Who the fuck mentioned y'all? But yeah, I don't give a damn that y'all mad. But I will like to clear up, clear that up. That's not the reason why there's a nurse shortage. But I stand on what I said. Stop entering this fucking field if you don't have a heart for it. And even though Selena apologized with that very lackluster apology, I was like, yo, if this girl really has y'all triggered that much, I'm begging, just block her. I really believe in the almighty block button. Block her. If she really has y'all that mad and y'all don't want to see her anymore, stop engaging with her content and block her. But no, Nurse Talk came together and literally got this girl fired. I'm recording this video, what, in February going into March? And they got Shadi fired before Christmas. And mind you, it was cold as hell during last December, right? But they didn't care. They got her fired. She had to go find a new job right before Christmas. It was evil, evil work. And as I was watching people continually accost and just high-key bully the girl, us as the nursing community were only proving her right. But as I was just looking at my for you page it's like i suddenly had an epiphany and i was like wait a minute why are we saying shoddy is wrong because literally only a couple months before the selena versus morgan situation happened i don't know if y'all know because you're probably not on tiktok there was a situation where nurses were going around talking about their nursing aches and there was a couple of nurses who were working with like babies or the the pediatric population and they were like ugh my nursing ick is like when kids get shot and they want pain meds Reggie and there was example after example of nurses saying stuff like that and sounding like spawns of Satan because guys I believe that you guys don't have to post everything on social media. I believe in the power of diaries because if, if that's really how you feel okay nobody else has to know but the fact that the camera was put in front of them and they were like yeah let me say that i look he ate with that goes to show us that there is a problem okay no this one when a kid comes comes in with a gunshot wound, but then cries because we gotta stick him for laps. <laughs> or really have tattoos. That and like that when we gotta stick him for a hobby. Sir, can't do it. You've been doing a lot more. Mm-mm. Ick is when you come in for your induction talking about can I take a shower and eat? What? My ick is when you ask me how much the baby weighs and it's still and it's still in your hands. <laughs> Dad comes outside and asks for a paternity test right outside the room door saying you don't want any pain medicine no epidural but you are at an eight out of ten pain with just a servidil and you're still closed and so as i was really reflecting on why i personally felt so triggered by this whole situation and what it says about nursing as a whole i was like let me do a little deep dive to figure out what the hell is going on now let's talk about the actual problems with nursing and so by this point i'm really sadly starting to see where the selena girl is coming from i'm seeing a lot of mean girl nurses and yes not every nurse you're going to meet is going to be a mean girl i've met some great nurses Nurses and other medical professionals that I'm like thank God you were in charge of my care today because if I got one of your colleagues who knows if I would leave the hospital or my mom would leave the hospital and I just feel like yes uncompassionate mean nurses are a problem we all see that we all know that right 
But there are problems along with nursing that y'all don't really get to see. And I feel like those problems are contributing to the mean and uncompassionate nurses. And I feel like it's finally time we talk about it. People are always shaming nurses and saying we only went into it for the money. But when it's a doctor doing the exact same fucking thing, it's silent. It's just crickets. Why? Part of it is because doctors and physicians is a more male-dominated field. And as a society, we just respect men more. And nursing is a more female-dominated field and we all just hate women. But the truth of the matter is, most of y'all don't know what your doctors actually think about you. Many, many, many doctors actually hate people and that's why they became doctors. So they don't have to have any real interaction with patients. They don't have to take care of anyone for long periods of time. They get to look and sound fancy in their white coat explaining procedures. They get to perform a nice fun surgery on you while you're literally unconscious. But afterwards, that's the nurse's job. When you're actually awake and in pain and struggling, they're never there for that. So many doctors are so disrespectful to nurses because they see us as beneath them and they treat us accordingly. Where I used to work, doctors did rounds on the patients and they stand right in the middle of the hallway in a huge group. When a nurse walks by to get through, they don't move out of the way. They won't even look up. I've had to shove doctors out of the way, shoulder check doctors because they will not move out of the way. I say, excuse me, they don't move. They don't see me, they don't respect me. They don't even make eye contact with the nurse's station and they treat patients the exact same way, y'all just don't see it. When I tell you guys, it is so fucking rare to meet a doctor who actually treats nurses like people, who says, excuse me, who says, hi, please, thank you, who looks you in the eye when they talk to you, who treats us like people and not just the people who fulfill their orders. There have been so many times when a doctor comes out of the room to tell me, oh, the patient wants to go to the bathroom. Okay? There are seven doctors in that room right now. You came out of the room to tell me, the nurse, to come do it for you? I literally have to tell them, okay? There's a bathroom in the room. You can just walk into the bathroom. I'll try to meet you after when they're done, but for right now, you need to go help the patient. And they look at me like I am so insane for insisting that they have any direct patient care. How dare I make them touch a patient who's awake? 90% of them are like that, I swear to God. We are all healthcare professionals, we're all on one team to take care of this one patient, but they don't even want to touch the patient unless it's medically necessary. Getting them a cup of ice is too much work. That's for the nurse. So, as a nurse, you should definitely go into it for the money. I went to school for four years and I made six figures out of college. It is just so weird for people to shame others for taking a high paying job with worldwide job security. Nursing is one of the most secure jobs on the planet. Do I pay my bills with um, morals and values or what? I was 14 when I decided to become a nurse. I didn't know the value of a dollar. I couldn't even have a fucking job yet. I just wanted to be a really good, admirable, respected person in society. It was just such a beautiful profession to me. Then I became a bedside nurse and every day I left my job feeling unfulfilled and depressed. I wasn't helping anybody. I left work every single day feeling like I didn't do anything that mattered. I wasn't saving lives. I was having poop thrown at me and called racial slurs every day. Some people really enjoy bedside. I've heard people really like the NICU and L&D. But otherwise, do it for the money because the job is not fulfilling to everybody. So if you're gonna feel shitty every day, you might as well be making six figures. Also, bedside isn't the only kind of nursing you can do. If you don't like people but still wanna be a nurse, just don't do bedside, it's fine. So it just pisses me off when y'all tell nurses that you should wanna be treated like shit without caring about a paycheck. But when it's a doctor who don't give a shit about the patients at all and are just waiting to make half a million dollars a year, y'all are silent. Society treats doctors like they're the fucking messiah when they have no idea how they actually feel about you. Obviously, it's not all doctors. I've met a couple great doctors, but for the most part, they're shitty. They've been in school for 30 years. They're not socialized enough to be around people like that. That's just my two cents. So y'all all just watched that TikTok and I really feel like Shadi was spitting when she was talking about why a lot of y'all's hatred towards nursing and nursing as a field has to do with sexism. Like yes, we all understand that your nurses and overall everybody who is on your treatment team, because let's clock it, y'all don't be coming for any of the other professions like this should be kind to you. We're not even talking about that because that's an obvious statement, right? But a lot of y'all's overall general hatred towards nurses has to do with sexism and let me explain. So we all know that nursing is a female dominated space. And then like being a doctor or a physician or even a PA is a male dominated space, right? And all y'all's beef and all of y'all's comments from what I'm seeing, Y'all only hold nurses to this impossible standard. A common critique that I saw of people who become nurses, women who become nurses, if you're being so real, is y'all are only doing it for the money. And I hate to say this. No, I don't. I actually don't hate to say it. It's the truth. We live in America. I, I, I'm not talking to those people who are not living in America. But every job we do here, okay, 
we need money every job that we do here in the united states of america we all do for money we all do for money you work at mcdonald's you're doing it for the money you're working at ups you're doing it for the money you're working as a nurse you're doing it for the money you're working as a doctor or oh, for sure you're doing it for the money and i just am so sick and tired of seeing y'all consistently say that like oh my gosh y'all only doing this job for the money every job I don't know about no other country. I, we, we are a capitalist society. We are not a socialist society. Every job that we do, we have to get paid for. We have to get paid for. And I just feel like y'all are so mad because I guess a bunch of the new nurses are like making a livable, sustainable wage and like i guess bragging about it and y'all wish that we got paid less and you might be like oh emma that's not true oh emma that's not true like i continue to say on this channel if you don't believe me god god is my witness go on tiktok look up off to nurse life and look at the comments and you'll see people genuinely angry that these nurses are making money in order to afford a nice apartment a nice car to look good it literally is just sexism because would you tell a doctor how dare you do this job for money no because we know that you go through all that schooling to do what make money like i really wish in fact edited me put the average cost of nursing school on the screen that's how much that a lot of people go into in order to get their bsn right you think I'm going to not want to make money and not advocate for myself to make more money? And I feel like, especially with the patient ratios, at least right now, um, the place I'm working at, the average patient ratio for a nurse on a med search floor is 1 to 5 and 1 to 6. These patients all have a lot of things going on with them. Diabetes, hypertension, um, a type of infection. With patients like that, Obviously, I want to be well compensated, but y'all don't want to see these people compensated because y'all hate women. Y'all hate women. And I know y'all hate women because the way you talk about them and the way they dress. And then this directly leads me into my next point, the looks and aesthetics of nursing and how that mates with racism and sexism. I just love it when racism meets sexism because as a black woman, I can't catch a break. So a lot of the reason why people were mad at Selena is that she made a comment practically insinuating that if you don't like nursing you need to practically like be a bottle girl or something like that and everybody well all of the black nurses was like this is a dig towards us and she was like i never said it was black women who should be like bottle girls and such y'all just making it about y'all if we're being so honest who is the main demographic of bottle girls black and latino women and I just feel like a lot of black women were so like triggered about this because I'm telling y'all this is a very niche subject you have to know to know but a lot of black women who look like this edges lashes nails or whatever who are living like the soft girl luxury life gets repeatedly accosted and are called bad nurses because they have the audacity to try to look good while going to work and i really feel like the reason why a lot of black nurses were triggered is because people continually accost black nurses for trying to look good on the job this makeup eyelashes makeup i don't look like this when i go to work i look like i'm depressed because i am but some people actually put effort into their appearance because what they say looking good makes you feel good but i'm sorry i'm not i'm not waking up early for my 12 hour shift to put on makeup y'all got me messed up but some people do and i have to give them their praises but there is a certain demographic of people when they see nurses but specifically black nurses trying to look good for their job they're like that's just how i know you're a bad nurse if i had you as my nurse i just know i'm gonna get bad care you're gonna get bad care because somebody has a lace front and lashes okay then and it's also from the nursing managers it's also from the white nurses if i'm being so for real there is a lot of racism that goes on in the nursing field like you don't like i said like i said you don't have to believe anything i'm saying but literally go on tiktok Go on TikTok for yourself. Hear, hear first-hand experiences of how black women are treated when they want to go outside of med surge. Med surge has literally been stereotyped as the black field of nursing because nobody really wants to treat black women who are outside of that field with respect. And I have experienced the racism too. And I am such a happy-go-lucky person, bro. If you know me outside of my YouTube, and even on my YouTube, like all of my subscribers who we be chit-chatting, y'all know I'm a happy-go-lucky person. It's people who are always testing me. That's the problem, bro. I remember I was so happy, but I had a really bad um, 
what's my call it patient to CNA ratio I had 12 patients who are like mostly complete care which means you have to bathe them um, they can't like they're incontinent that means they're pooping themselves peeing themselves and I had to do all of that myself right barely out of training 12 to 1 I was like this shift is awful but I'm really glad I have a job I'm really glad I can get paid it's whatever right and as I was about to leave this white nurse stopped me and she was like so you were a tech this whole time and I was like yeah and she was like well I thought you were a nurse and I was like why would you think that and she was like because you're wearing the wrong color and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. And she was like, the next time I see you, you better be wearing the right color because I don't want people to think that you're an actual nurse. And I'm not telling you to burn your scrubs. But the next time, you need to be wearing the right scrubs because people need to know what your actual position is, okay? I immediately reported her because I don't play that. Because the issue is, right, one of the texts left early. So my patient's ratio doubled, right? And I literally went out of my way to help her because she was the nurse that got added to my team practically. And she practically was like, yeah, I was so confused why you were trying to help me. Turns out you're just a tech. I wouldn't have treated you that well if I knew you were just a tech. And that was so vile to me because she and her friend who were also white cornered me in the break room to say all of that when I went out of my way to help her so all of that stuff on top of my next section is why I feel like a lot of these nurses are just they don't have the energy to be bubbly and sweet in your faces I'm not saying that's an excuse to be rude because being rude and mean is uncalled for but a lot of y'all expect nurses to just be so happy-go-lucky and I'm sorry, you're not going to get that because every nurse is not the same personality archetype. And so this next section is going to talk about the actual problems, problems, right? With the field of nurses. And so I just wanted to show y'all other nurses, POVs and how they have been experiencing nursing for themselves. Because a lot of y'all will be like, that's not true. That's not true. Take it from a first hand. What is, I forgot, a primary source. Let me show y'all some primary sources. As a nurse, I'm genuinely debating having to press charges against a patient. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I recently worked an agency shift where I had a patient spray his entire catheter bag all over me because he was pissed off. This man wanted his Dilaudid four hours early and he was so mad that I wouldn't give it to him. So this man literally thought the only fair thing to do was to open up his catheter bag and get revenge. So I'm genuinely curious, if you were in my situation, would you press charges against a patient? I'm not really worried about health effects. Like I threw away my scrubs, I bleached to my skin and boiled it off in the shower so i think i'm gonna be fine it's just the fact that this man is completely alert and oriented and just couldn't control his anger i've had patients throw their urinals i've had patients throw their food trays but i've never had a patient intentionally open up his catheter bag and spray it all over somebody so i'm genuinely just curious like do i press charges do i just drop it do i report it to the facility like what do i do well no don't get me wrong i definitely reported it to the facility but like what do i do now like i've been in some pretty crappy situations as a nurse but i've never had this happen before i honestly just hate confrontation and this sounds like a whole nightmare i don't even know what's gonna happen to the patient i was just working there as an agency shift so i have no idea i honestly just feel so stressed and i have no idea what to do so if you're lucky enough to have something like this ever happen to you um first of all i'm so sorry and like what did you do comment your horror story and tell me what i should do because i have no idea and hopefully nothing like this ever happens ever 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 again. and so you just heard shoddy's point of view right where literally she was doing her job as a nurse and making sure this man got his medicine as prescribed i think Q4 right which is every four hours and because she couldn't give it to him early because a that's a risk to the patient and b it's a risk to her license he decided to punish her he being the patient by throwing his urinary bag at her and I really wish that this was in the reality of nursing. It literally is. Current license is a CNA but just because I'm a CNA doesn't mean I don't see what the nurses are doing right bro god as my witness um <laughs> it's not funny but it's funny when I was working in my pediatric clinical I had a patient whose father kept letting him climb on windows so every time I would walk into the room the little boy would be climbing on windows and I was like yeah y'all gotta stop that y'all gotta stop that so I called in my preceptor and I was like yo obviously he not listening to me I don't, I don't think it helped that they were a white family and I was black so they're like who's this little black girl telling us that we can't let our son climb on the windows mind you that boy was sick. I was like, please, for the love of God, this boy has no strength to be doing all of this. Let him lay on the bed. And as my preceptor was practically telling the parents and the boy the same thing I was saying when I came in. Originally, the little boy spit. When I tell you spit, like oral secretions gathered up like this, then pow, right in my face. And I was just like, 
And what made it worse is I wasn't even mad at the kid because kids are awful. I'm so sorry. Kids are awful. They're not emotionally regulated, right? The parent, the dad specifically was like, oh, now they won't let us leave because you spit in her face. Not, hey, you shouldn't spit in her face. Or that's bad. How could you do that? How could you spit in her face? He was like, now they won't let us leave because you spit in her face. And I just walked away and I just took the freaking toxic <laughs> freaking hospital soap rubbed it all in my eyes opened my eyes for two minutes let the water rinse out and then my preceptor was like you know what go home girl go home I i'm not gonna let you stay here the whole 12 hours that was madness meets badness go home and then i obviously couldn't go home because i didn't know what kind of icky stuff that kid just put into my eyes he could have some type of i don't know freaking illness so i went to the er and they told me i was fine but it took me a while to get over it because i practically just got assaulted and i wasn't even getting paid y'all i was doing this free free clinical and got assaulted but yeah nurses don't deserve to get paid okay okay you don't have to believe me about how brutal nursing but specifically bedside nursing can be i'm going to show y'all another tiktok where this nurse just says her responsibilities and what she does so there is the job description when you apply and then there's the actual reality of your job description once you get in the hospital. So I'm going to explain to you guys what my responsibilities were as a bedside nurse working in surgical oncology. Now that's classified as a med surge floor. So if you work in med surge, your duties will be somewhat the same, but they're going to vary because it's a different kind of floor. As a bedside nurse, you are responsible for passing medications in all forms, IV, IM, oral, liquid, subcutaneous, Duh, we know that. Ensuring the patient's food tray order is correct. If they're supposed to be NPO, they shouldn't get any food. If they're on a soft diet, etc. Cleaning up a patient when they pee, poop, vomit, bleed, a mixture of any of those. No, the nurse aide is not always available. Placing IVs, like when the patient rips them out three times in a shift. Keeping the rooms clean. Even if the patient is dirty, it's your job to keep the room clean. If your manager finds a dirty room, you're gonna get in trouble. Providing education to the patient and their family. Kicking out family members when they're, they're past visiting hours and being disrespectful, whatever. Calling security when they're being disrespectful. Taking blood sugars and making sure the order is correct, whether it's ACHS or Q6. Ordering and placing restraints on a patient. Administering blood and blood products. Transferring patients to other units. The nurse must be present if the patient is unstable or if they're on certain medications or receiving blood. You have to go down with them to CT or MRI. You have to leave the floor and go with that patient. Answering call bells. No, the nurse aide is not always available to do that. Calling or physically going to the pharmacy when you need meds as soon as possible. Providing clean bedding. If there is none, you have to go find some. Contacting family members about updates about the patient. If they leave the number, you have to call them and let them know what's going on. No matter how busy you are, you have to answer the phone at the nurse's station. Changing and or emptying ostomy bags. Accessing and deaccessing central lines as well as dressing changes for them. Emptying and or inserting Foley catheters. Drawing labs. No, phlebotomy is not always available to do that. Placing patients on telemetry, monitoring their heart rates and rhythms for the entire shift. Taking vitals every four to six hours. No, the aide is not always going to do that. Doing EKGs. If a patient has a complaint about their roommate, the temperature in their room, their room placement, their bed placement, that is your job to coordinate that with your charge nurse and fix it. Contacting transport for patients who aren't there yet or who are about to leave. You have to make sure they get home safe. Communicating with the provider and advocating for the patient. If they lose any belongings, you have to track them down. They're in your care. Giving enemas. Inserting and removing rectal tubes. Admitting patients. Discharging patients. Being able to identify emergency situations. Responding to said emergency situations. Performing CPR. If your patient wants a sandwich, you have to go get one. Monitoring another nurse's patients while she's on break. So your four to five patients plus her four to five patients. So eight to ten patients. And doing everything previously stated for those patients as well. Giving report to the next shift. If they are late, you cannot leave. You have to stay until they get there. If any technology on the floor breaks, uh, yeah, you have to fix that too. Making sure patients have their care in their language. So you have to get a translator for every single interaction. Frequent rounding on patients, so making sure you walk by and see that they're not on the floor or deceased. Assisting patients to the bathroom and then back to bed. No, the aide will not always be there to do that. Wound care, mouth care, trach care, ostomy care, foley care, skin care. Bathing patients and changing the entire bedspread. No, the aide is not always available to do that. Turning patients every two hours so they don't develop bed sores. 
charting every output, every input, every surgical site, every dressing change, every complaint, every injury, every bed sore. Lastly, doing all of this with a smile for 12 hours, three to five times a week. Also insert doing all this with racist patients, entitled patients, rude patients, needy patients, anxious patients, etc. So for everybody commenting, you should have expected this. You were a CNA. How? How could I have expected all of that? You literally have no idea until you're already drowning in it. So in conclusion, final look, you would not be able to pay me enough money to go back to bedside. It's too hard and unfair, so I'll just quit. And yeah, literally, it is just not a good time overall because I really feel like people don't understand what it's like to be a nurse. And I get it, I get it. A lot of y'all see the aesthetic nursing or what I use my nursing paycheck on. And the reason why y'all don't really realize the actual reality of nursing is because we can't really be showing y'all. Do you know how wild it would be if we did a nursing vlog and actually showed y'all stuff? That would violate HIPAA so bad. So y'all can only see what we show y'all, which is a story time practically. But yeah, it, it's actually the bad times. We're in the bad times right now. And if it isn't literally our jobs being hard, because they are hard, I don't, I don't know what else I could show y'all to let y'all believe that nursing is a hard job. It's the way we are perceived while doing this hard job. I'm going to insert a couple of TikToks about how new grads are treated and how the public treats us. But guys, it's a mess. We kick all of the nurses who wear figs and the new grads out of this country. Who will all the miserable nurses have to make fun of? Oh yeah, that's not mm, it. I mean, she's got a point. Not. This is not being part of the problem. This is being the whole problem. It's been really frustrating on TikTok recently because I swear I don't know what's going on. But these are prime examples of why we will never get ahead. Nurses are nurses' own worst enemy. It's not a contest. It's not a competition. It's not a badge of honor to let patients and family members and management and administration disrespect you. It's not a badge of honor to miss your breaks. It's not a badge of honor to let people throw things at you. It's not a contest on who has had it the worst and who will take so much abuse. Having boundaries does not make anyone a bad nurse. It does not make anyone a lazy nurse. It makes them a human being and a professional. I don't understand why boundaries is such a difficult concept for nursing and healthcare. It's, it's not something to be proud of to not have those boundaries. Nurses are not servants. We are not servants of the sick. We are not nuns. I don't know how many more times we can have this conversation. The idea that nursing is a calling is very outdated. We are not there to be your servants. We are not there to wait on you hand and foot. We are there to facilitate treatment orders and to help you heal. I understand that the nursing of the past were nuns and that it was a, a life of service and sacrifice. This is 2023 and nursing is a career. It is a job. Yes, nurses should have empathy. Yes, we have kindness when people are kind to us. I do not have to be kind to you while you are calling me names or in some cases being physically violent. We are not doormats. And honestly, to keep being emotionally manipulated and people thinking that we owe them this empathy and kindness and that they can just treat us however they want in return because we're nurses and we're gonna be kind to them no matter what, no. No, we're not. Boundaries in nursing is a new idea, but it's going to be an important one moving forward for the sustainability of the career. And like I said, going back to my sexism points, I just feel like all of this unnecessary backbiting and criticism wouldn't be a thing if nursing wasn't such a female dominated space. Because the fact that this person is like, yeah, you need to practically be grateful because what? nurses are the servants of the sick we have rights to just be like yeah i'm not dealing with that i really feel like some of y'all if y'all were the management and saw me get spit on they'd be like yeah you need to go back to work 
We don't care that you were just assaulted. You need to go back to work. Nursing is a job at the end of the day. We get paid. And literally, like how y'all can complain about your jobs, we can complain too. And we deserve to get paid because what is a job? I think you guys forget that nursing has evolved to be a more clinical, more technical job than it was in the days of freaking Florence Nightingale. I also wanted to say that lady was extremely racist, but I digress. These nurses weren't really getting paid like that. A lot of y'all have this sexist belief that nursing is supposed to be like a volunteer job or we're supposed to act like nuns and i just feel like that's where a lot of y'all are losing your sauce because a lot of y'all will be mean and rude to the nurses and they get confused when we are mean and rude to you too and i just feel like a lot of y'all have this very sexist belief that nursing is still like the ye old time nursing where it was like the nuns who were taking care of the sick but if you literally look at the state of our world that's literally not what it is and I really feel like that's why y'all feel like a lot of these nurses are rude. Because half the time these nurses aren't rude. They're just setting hard boundaries and y'all just want nurses to let y'all step over their boundaries. And I hate to say this and I feel like a lot of y'all are going to be upset. But a lot of y'all are mean and rude to nurses. Not realizing that they're humans too. And getting perplexed and getting confused when these nurses have the same energy back towards you. And that's why you're calling these nurses mean and rude when they literally just have boundaries. And they literally are just telling you no when the answer is no for example right i've had a lot of times where i've been working as a student nurse where the nurse who's like in charge will have to tell a patient or specifically the patient's family no right and y'all will be like y'all are so mean y'all are so boom i'm gonna report you and i'm like do it for example i was just working a shift recently right and i had a patient who had back surgery and she had a wound the mom came rushing to the freaking nursing station trying to go to the charged nurse and was like no one has been taking care of my daughter uh you guys are letting her get sick no one cares you guys are just sitting here on your phones and obviously we recognized her and we were like oh god here this lady goes again because no matter what we told this lady if we didn't do something for her right then and there we were the bad me nurses and so my nurse the nurse in charge would have to go to her and explain in front of her daughter again ma'am we have been taking care of your daughter. Ask her yourself. We change her dressings every day because it's Q1. And if it gets messy, we'll change it. But look at the dressing. It's a clean, dry, intact dressing. And she was like, I don't care. Y'all are going to let her get sepsis. And we said, okay. If you want us to change it now, even though it's not soiled and they changed it three hours ago because we just had shift change, we'll do it. And the daughter, because she's the patient and she's 50 and the mom was 70, was like mom they've been changing it you need to relax and i'm telling you a lot of people are like this in the hospital and before y'all get on me because i can already see the comments that doesn't excuse a nurse being mean and rude to you but a lot of the times it's not a nurse being mean and rude to you it's a nurse telling you no is no i'm sorry this is a hospital we have rules and like i said there are a lot of issues going on not just with nursing but the entire medical field and i'm just using this situation to finally speak up on it because like morgan said if you're not in it i guess you can't speak about it i don't know but i am in it so i can speak about it i'm telling you this right now the state of our current affairs in medicine is scaring the hell out of me there's a lot of nurse talk drama going on right now specifically surrounding the nursing shortage and i wanted to make a video talking about the nursing shortage because it's actually a really complex problem that is very interesting so starting out when people talk about the nursing shortage they're talking about a shortage of bedside nurses bedside nurses are the nurses that when you go into the hospital when you go into an acute care setting those are the nurses that are taking care of you basically it's the first thing that you think of when you think of a nurse so some of this nursing shortage actually comes from the board of nursing so schools of nursing have to maintain accreditation through the board of nursing and the board of nursing says that in order for a school of nursing to maintain their accreditation in order for them to continue educating nurses they have to have a certain pass rate on the NCLEX which is the nursing licensure exam so because nursing schools want to be accredited they want to have very high NCLEX passing rates and the NCLEX is by no means an easy exam it's a very very difficult exam nursing schools then make it very difficult and are very selective with the nursing students that they put through their programs and then when you couple that with the fact that there's a huge lack of nursing educators it makes for very very competitive nursing programs and nursing schools are not producing nurses at a level that would sustain the profession 
that's a fact they just aren't like if we in the u.s need five nurses a year and nursing schools are only putting out two like that that's a big problem right so the nursing school piece of it contributes its own part to the shortage now let's talk about how there's a shortage at the bedside nursing is a very versatile profession which is why i recommend it to almost anyone that wants to do something that will like help improve their socioeconomic status and that's because as a nurse you will always have a job and a lot of nursing jobs don't even have to do directly with patients like my mom works at a desk and she works advocates for patient safety by looking at numbers and looking at rates of certain things and like talking about best practices and looking at research like she hasn't done direct patient care at the bedside in probably i don't know several years now but she is still a nurse because that is how versatile nursing is now when you work as a bedside nurse because we are working within a for-profit healthcare system even the nonprofits are for profit and you're also a public facing profession you are a service industry you are offering a service you know which is healthcare to patients this is like literally why when i meet someone who's a really good server i'm like you should be a nurse because it's very similar to what we do anyways bedside nursing is a very hard job you are always wanting to do more with less always it's like physically mentally emotionally demanding a lot of nurses sustain work injuries like to their backs to their legs to their hips you know you're pretty much on your feet for 12 hours a day and then of course there's the mental strain because you are you know like taking care of patients you have to be mentally up with it you have to be paying attention you have to be listening you have to be constantly aware of what's going on and i didn't even talk about like emotionally charged situations where you know like patients are literally having the worst day of their lives your patients are quite literally dying sometimes and that's a huge emotional burden so all that to say bedside nursing is not a glamorous job at all now there are a lot of benefits to bedside nursing that i talk about a lot on my platform i will not say that i don't talk about them i love to talk about the benefits you only work three days a week i you know can make a lot of money and i have made a lot of money was that why i got into nursing no i got into nursing because i wanted to be a nurse like i loved helping people but then you know covid came around and i had the opportunity to make a lot of money of course i was going to go make a lot of money but that in and of itself even though i talk about that a lot did not come without a price like i had to go through a very stressful nursing program for two years i had to then get my experience in a very stressful job for two years and then i had to be a bedside nurse during covid like that was awful i still have so much ptsd from that like that was not a glamorous time in my life at all so i understand th that a lot of people think nurses go into this with this like fruity idea it's going to be so great and then they realize it isn't and i know that because i did that like i was so excited when i went through this stressful nursing program i was like oh, i'm gonna be a nurse it's gonna be great i'm gonna have all these benefits i'm gonna get to help people it's gonna be fun and then i got thrown into a system that i realized doesn't really help people like and i was used and abused by a system so that a ceo or you know shareholders could make a buck at the end of the day so you know nursing's this hugely versatile field that's always growing always changing directions of course nurses are leaving this bedside spot to go other places right and i know so many nurses personally who i think their time at the bedside has expired and they should probably be moving on to different positions that aren't at the public facing but also at the same time you know somebody has to do the job so anyways i hope that this was a little bit insightful into how the nursing shortage actually has come about and how like it plays out today and i totally forgot to mention that a huge percentage of nurses nowadays are baby boomers and they are getting close to retirement they are leaving the workforce and we don't have nursing schools that are producing enough nurses to replace the nurses that are leaving so yeah that adds a whole other layer to the nursing shortage anyways it's a very interesting topic and it's very complex when you get down to the root of it and if you've had a bad experience with a nurse i'm sorry like you know there's four million nurses in the country like i can't control all of them i'm sorry that they were a bitch to you like i fucking hate my job most of the time but i try and be kind to my patient because i look at it as like this me and my patient against everybody else like this me and you homie like are we suffering here together friend and we're gonna get through it you know like that's that but yeah that's anyways just i wanted to talk about that i thought it was very fascinating and it was you know not talked about enough recently hospitals in the united states are now teetering on the brink 
where Mass Gen is out of hospital bed. Oh, this just isn't happening in Massachusetts. The hospital overcrowding issue is a nationwide problem. And this is primarily driven by the fact that a lot of hospitals have struggled with growing capacity challenges. As an economist, I tend to think of a hospital like business. You have costs and you have revenues. And in the US, every empty bed is a cost that's not making the hospital money. So hospitals have gotten very good at streamlining the amount of hospital beds that are available. But by doing this, they eliminate any sort of flexibility if there is a nationwide emergency. And we saw this during the COVID-19 pandemic. In fact, this study found that the overcrowding in some hospitals from spring, summer of 2020 led to the unnecessary unalivings of 6,000 people. And even four years later, we are seeing this similar overcrowding issue in U.S. hospitals. Again, a lot of this stems from the fact that the U.S. has fewer acute care hospital beds per capita compared to other similar countries. As you can see here, the comparable country average is 4.2 and the U.S. has a little over half of that at 2.5. A lot of these hospital bed shortages seem to be coming from the emergency room where a lot of times patients come to the ER and end up having very long wait times without having access to a bed. In fact, 28% of ER doctors have said that patients were forced to stay in the ER more than two weeks before getting a hospital bed in some instances. And this is all happening in an environment where a key federal program intended to alleviate some of the crisis is expiring. In 2020, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid started funding a program called Acute Hospital Care at Home, which provided funding to allow patients that were well enough to be home, but sick enough that they probably should be at a hospital, to be cared for in their own home with round-the-clock monitoring and a twice daily visit by medical personnel, but that funding is set to expire in the next month or so, which if that program is set to expire, could exacerbate the overcrowding issue because patients now have to go to the hospital for care that they would normally be able to seek at home. Hey guys, this is Voice Over Emma here, and I just wanted to come in practically after I filmed everything to add a couple of pieces of information that I feel like are very important. So I just played those two TikToks for you guys to really go to show you why nurses were so triggered about someone who didn't know what they were talking about, talking about the nursing shortage. And I get it. Everybody wants to practically dog nurses at this time, but that is not the conversation we should be having. I wanted to show y'all some real life statistics to show y'all that this nursing shortage is bad. If it isn't bad, right now it's going to be bad so bad when a lot of the older nurses up and retire and guys I'm telling y'all we are not we are not in the good place we are not in the good place and as somebody who literally is going to be in this field doing the real work being on the ground and under like what four to five months at this point it's very scary and if you are not concerned you should definitely be concerned at this point especially if you have just been keeping up with overall healthcare news literally the doctors went on strike in korea and people have actually died because of this just imagine that same situation going on in america the nursing homes are literally worse than hell at this point. Do y'all's research, guys. Do y'all research, guys. And I have another set of TikToks I want to show y'all real quick. I can completely relate to this young man's experience. When I had my second baby, I had been a nurse for seven years and an ICU nurse for four years. With my first baby, I was only in my prereqs for my BSN, so I had no nursing experience at all. With my second baby, my OB wanted to induce me because he was concerned about my baby's size, which is absolutely fine. So I get admitted to the hospital. We start the induction process. I go to the restroom and as I'm getting up from the toilet, I feel this release and then there's this pink fluid dripping down my leg. So I'm like, oh, my water broke. So I call the nurse. I'm like, hey, I'm just letting you know my water broke. So she comes to the room. She's like, no, nah, I don't think so. I'm like, well, it did, you know, this is the sensation I felt, like, here's the fluid here. It is what it is. She's like, no, it's probably just urine. I'm like, but it looks, you know, pink or blood tinged. If it is urine, that is an issue. She's like, oh, no, sometimes that can happen, but I'll test it anyway. So she took the strip and tested one of the drops of the fluid on the floor. And she's like, no, it's not. So in my head, I knew that it was amniotic fluid and my water broke, but I'm like, I'll just document it for my purposes and discuss it with either a charge nurse or my OB later. As I lay down for a little bit, I'm resting, but I feel the sensation of more fluid pulling onto my chucks pad. Um, and I also notice like a weird smell. So I asked my husband like, hey, can you look and see what you see there? He's like, oh, it's a bunch of brown stuff there. 
I'm like, oh shoot, it's meconium. So my water has broken. So I hit the call um, button again. I'm like, hey, I'm just letting you know um, there's meconium here if you want to come. She comes, looks at it. She's like, yeah, but I, I still don't think, you know, it, it's your water breaking because I tested the fluid and it wasn't amniotic fluid. I'm like, yeah, but it's clearly meconium here. How would that be here if my water has not broken? So she's like, well, I'll just call the laborist. So the laborist comes in, pulls my covers back, looks at it, and he's like, yeah, I'm not going to test this. It's clearly meconium. Your mucous membranes have broken. Fast forward, I went through my blood pressure dropping <laughs> and having to request to have IV fluids because I was severely lightheaded. Throughout the whole process, I just remember thinking, if it's this hard for me as an ICU nurse to advocate for myself, imagine people who have no health care experience or people who don't have a significant other to advocate for them. So I think whether or not this young man met criteria for IV fluid hydration is neither here nor there. He has a, a point in that, you know, we have to advocate for our patients because some, some of them have no one as a representative. So yeah, that's it. That's my experience on this. I'm going to play two videos and I want you to put two and two together for me, please. Thank you. Here we go. I've been an ear doctor for 10 years now and a significant amount of my African-American patients while I'm doing a history and physical to understand better what's going on with their problem today, they have someone on the phone. They're either just talking on the phone or they're on FaceTime, but a large percentage of my African-American patients have someone that's there in the room. Eddie Bernice Johnson was the first nurse, the third woman from Texas, and the first black person from Dallas to serve in Congress. She died last week due to allegedly mismanagement of her care at a healthcare facility. The facility she was in was a rehabilitation facility where she had been sent after having had surgery on her spine. According to her family, when they went to visit her just a couple of weeks after her surgery, they found her sitting in her own feces and urine because no one had come to help get her cleaned up. Imagine where the incision might be if you had surgery on your lower spine. And imagine if you are laying in a bed and you pee and you have a bowel movement, where all of that material might collect. Once you put two and two together, you won't be surprised to hear that she developed a wound infection that ultimately required her having another surgery to clean out the wound and remove the hardware and put new hardware into her spine. Ultimately, she was not able to recover. The first surgery was September 7th. The second surgery was September 25th. And by mid-December, she was sent home on hospice care. One of the most dangerous places to be as a black person is in a medical setting alone. And it doesn't matter what status you have in society. Being black in a medical setting can kill you. Although, to be quite honest with that doctor, I don't think his question was sincere at all. But anyways, I wanted to connect one more dot that disabled people have been trying to fucking scream to the rooftops about for years. The hospital system where she was, the rehab system, Baylor, Scott, and White, was bought out by private equity. It was bought out by private equity. Or as this article likes to call it, consolidated. Do you all get it yet? The one thing that they continue to hammer into us when we're in nursing school is the importance of social determinants of health. And if y'all don't know what social determinants of health are or is, it practically is just telling us as the medical professionals what are factors that are going to prevent our patients from getting care. For example, education, economics, all of that, right? But with the TikToks I literally just showed you, no matter what type of benefits you have with being wealthy with having a good education the american healthcare system is literally so broken that even being privileged like that is not going to do anything for you i mean literally look at the tiktoks i showed y'all we had two people talking about how they were able to use their education to practically tell their healthcare workers that um the care you're giving me baby because i'm a nurse I know you're messing up and they continually have to advocate for themselves. Like guys, look at the way Eddie Bernice Johnson was treated. She was literally the first black person and the first black nurse to get all of these high accolades in Texas, but still that could not save her. She got some terrible, terrible, terrible health care and she ended up dying from an infection that I totally believe was easily preventable. And this is what I'm talking about. As a future black nurse, this is making me shake in my boots because they tell us if you're well educated, if you have money, 
that's going to improve your health care. But look, it obviously doesn't. And this is what I'm talking about when I say our health care system is literally in a state of complete chaos, especially in nursing homes, which are known to be long term care facilities. Y'all look up your local nursing home stuff in your state and tell me if I'm wrong. But literally from what I'm seeing, it's not a good place right now. It's not a good place. So unless we come together and we do something about it, when we get old, shoot, it's not even when we get old. When we get sick because COVID is still COVIDing, man, I don't know what to tell y'all. Man, I don't know what to tell y'all. I'm so sorry that this video has just been so TikTok heavy, but I really feel like allowing people's firsthand experiences to be said is just so insightful. And I feel like just me yapping at y'all with my, my expensive mic isn't really going to get the point across unless you see what I'm talking about for yourself. And so the reason why I wanted to make this video is practically to not let people just feel so defeated because after the whole Morgan versus Selena situation, I felt extremely defeated because I was like, there's nothing we can really do because the state of medicine is so terrible and so arduous. I wanna tell you guys, don't be defeated because there are things that you can do so you're practically not a victim of the american healthcare system i i, I don't know what to tell you all when it comes to medical bills because that's above me that one is above me but i know that if you are a patient or you have a family member that is a patient in the hospital don't just sit there and let the things that are happening happen to you like i definitely recommend if you can bringing someone with you to the hospital because the voices of two people are always more powerful than one and always advocate for yourself if you feel like your nurse is bullying you and is giving you bad patient care i would have to escalate it to the charge nurse or somebody else because i'm not about to be putting myself into medical debt to be bullied like that out of this world i refuse and also i'm gonna insert this tiktok from this man who's just giving good advice on what you can do to properly advocate for yourself here's how you can advocate for yourself if your doctor doesn't take your concerns seriously i'm a fourth year medical student and one of the first things we learned in medical school is how to put together a differential diagnosis it basically means tell me all the other things that it could be for example maybe you have a headache or you're feeling lightheaded, or have chest pain, abdominal pain, or you just feel really sad, and you bring this up to your doctor or clinician, and they just blow it off. Oh, it's, it's probably nothing. I want you to ask them, what is your differential diagnosis for this chest pain, for this abdominal pain, for my lightheadedness? This is where you catch them off guard because they weren't expecting you to know that word. So then they'll have to list it out. Well, your chest pain, it, I mean, it could be nothing or it could be a myocardial infarction. It could be a pulmonary embolism. It could be an aortic dissection. It could be blah, 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 blah. So next you ask them, how have you ruled those other ones out? Now they got to explain things to you. Even better, ask them, what's the evidence for and against that differential? Well, like, I, I guess it could be a heart attack because, you know, you're having the chest pain, the pressure, you know, it's worse. The shortness of breath is worse with activity and, uh, you know, the classic signs. Um, how have I ruled that out? Um, that's a good question. Maybe I should get that EKG. <laughs> the key to advocating for yourself is asking questions. Lots of questions. And if they get mad at you, so be it. This is your life. Hope that helps and so yeah i just wanted to make this video because as somebody who literally wants to be a nurse and is going to graduate in like four seconds high key I, I had to speak on this because it's been bothering my spirit literally since December, literally since 2023. And I really hope that you guys saw where I was coming from in a lot of my points because I really feel like I try to be as nuanced as possible, talking from both the patient's perspective and the nursing perspective because I feel like a lot of the time, y'all don't understand that the nurse isn't being mean. They're just setting boundaries and boundaries are okay to have. And yeah, I really hope that we're able to have a nice, respectful respectful discussion in the comments section because ever since i hit 10k y'all have been absolutely wilding but yeah i really hope that we can just talk about ways to advocate for ourselves things to do if you are in a situation where you feel like you do have a mean girl nurse and your quality of care is being affected by that and overall i don't know if you guys like this video make sure you hit the thumbs up button let me know what you thought of this video essay i don't know comments a grape a grape if you even got to this point of the video and i'll see you guys in the next one bye